Hey guys, so this is my Lampralogus Oscillatus Gold Tank. I'm doing some water changes in the fish room. As you can see. Let's look at this shell. Yeah. That is some Lampralogus Oscillatus Gold Fry. Awesome. Awesome, that's the first time I've spawned these guys uh, since the tr my original breeding the trio passed away almost a year ago. So, got some fry. Fantastic. I pulled one male out of here the other day. Um, he wasn't doing too well. Getting bashed up. And uh, that looks like it has paid off. So I'm hastily recording this because I, I'm really su surprised. Well, I'm not surprised I suppose. I had a feeling I would get them to breed eventually, uh, but this is the first time I've seen them. So I've literally just grabbed my phone out of my pocket and started filming. So now what I've got to do is work out which are the fish that aren't spawning um, and get them out of this tank so these fry don't get eaten uh, because I really want to breed these guys. So, uh, that's going to be the next issue. I'm trying to work out who I need to catch and get out of here. So, obviously, that one up in the top corner needs to go. Uh, they should be fairly easy to catch. Um, but I'm not sure out of these three over here, which ones I need to get out. So, maybe the one that's heading up the corner there. And then I leave these three in here to, um, to keep breeding. Uh, you can see this shell over here that's been covered up over the last day uh, it wasn't like that last night so I'm suspecting I might see some fry there uh, but yeah really pleased still I'm surprised but I'm not at the same time because I had a feeling I would see some fry soon um, there's no reason why these guys shouldn't spawn for me um, and thankfully it's, it's happened but yeah, like I said, trouble now is determining which ones I need to get rid of out of this tank. Just popped in some microworms for the fry. Let's see. Little, little one at the entrance of the shell out of the three here. Oh, there's another one entering kind of far away. The shell in the middle of these three. See, there's one right at the entrance there. Uh, and they're having their first feed of live microworms. Another one at the entrance of this shell. So as I was saying, uh, this female here, mind the algae, sorry guys. Uh, some algae's okay in the tanks. But uh, this female here, this is the one I'm gonna catch out. I caught uh, another female out just before. And was, she was very easy to catch out, the one that was hiding in the top corner previous, in the previous uh, segment of this video. Um, but yeah, she's the one I'm going to have to get out now. And you can see she keeps getting harassed by all three god oscillatus. So I think this male will spawn with these two girls. And I'll have another breeding trio. So she definitely has to get out. But at least I know which is which now. Or do I? <laughs> it is crazy, it's so hard to work out. But uh, let's watch the behavior. She should go back to her shells at the back of the tank. So the excess one, I believe, is behind this rock again. This is how you work it out. Watch the behavior of the fish, see which ones need to go. They've got their own territories in this tank, all good. And they, once they start spawning, they won't eat each other's fry because the fry will just mix together. So uh, that's how I was able to maintain a trio, a breeding trio in the one tank. But, um, this is behavior of Lamprologus Sosalatus Gold, one of the more challenging of the shell dwelling cichlids to breed, but uh, it's very rewarding 
beautiful coloration on these guys. Anyway, I keep losing concentration and this isn't the greatest film quality. Uh, keep looking over my shoulder, making sure that I'm not overfilling any of my uh, water change reservoirs, my barrels and all that. So, uh, sorry about that guys, but quite excited, like I said, to see some fry in this tank, finally. It's been well and truly over a year since I've been able to breed these guys. After I lost my original breeding trio, but it looks like I've got another breeding trio. Thankfully, we have to stop these guys in the coming months. Got a big spawn for the first spawn, probably about three or four fry, but eventually, it's gonna be about 50 to 60, maybe even more uh, fry per spawn. And with two females spawning every two to three weeks, that's a lot of fry as you can imagine. Anyway, I'll keep watching this tank as I'm filling up the water change reservoirs. Watch the behavior of those other, uh, of all the Ockies and just making sure I'm picking out the correct one to get rid of out of this aquarium. The other thing you want to look at if you're in a similar situation to myself, where you're trying to work out which is the excess fish that isn't part of the group breeding group, just watch the behavior with how the fish behave once that fish you're suspecting isn't in the group. When it appears, how do all the fish behave? Okay, because these guys can see each other and they leave each other to themselves. But once this fish keeps appearing from outside of the rock work, they all attack it. So that's how I've worked out. That is the excess one that has to come out. So I'm gonna get the net, catch this girl out. I believe that's another female because of the white trim on the dorsal fin and I'm really sorry about this footage guys, I believe that's a female and you can just tell all the Yockeys attack her, um, even when these guys can see each other, they don't really attack each other, they attack that Oki, so that's how I've determined, that's the one that I need to catch out, if I leave this Oki in there, she's not part of the breeding group, she will start to attack the fry when she can, because she knows they're not her fry. But uh, in a breeding trio, with this guy as the male and these two as the females, once the fry mix together, the two females, and obviously the male, won't eat the fry, because the fry all get mixed together. But that girl there, that keeps getting harassed, uh, she will definitely eat the fry if she could. She knows they're not her fry. Anyway, I better get her out uh, and not let her get harassed anymore. Again, look at the behavior. These guys are all in side of each other but they tolerate each other yes they do fight if one gets too close to each other's shell but they tolerate each other even though they can see each other that is the difference in the behavior compared to the one that once it comes out of its rock out of its little hiding spot it, they all attack it but these guys even though they will attack each other if they come too close to each other's shells they do tolerate each other even though they're in eyesight of each other. And you can see the male, I'm quite stressed out because I've got the mobile phone camera right in front of their tank. Uh, this is the female that he has spawned with. And hopefully on camera you can see some of the fry moving around the mouth of that shell. And you might remember me saying that I wanted to keep that female there at the back uh, in the aquarium and make sure or we'll try to get him to accept her and uh, she was over here by this shell originally uh, that was her shell you can see the amount of digging she's done however she's at the back of the aquarium now you might think that's a bad thing that she's been banished to the back of the aquarium but I'm pretty sure that they have spawned and that he spawned with this female uh, she's displaying that courtship behaviour with the dark horizontal bar from her gill plate to her tail whenever the male goes over to her. So you see the male there facing her. Uh, and she has been hugging that shell for the past two to three days. So I actually think they've spawned already in that shell. So I think it's worked. I think my persistence has paid off. We're trying to get him to accept a second female. And now I potentially have a breeding trio of Lamprologus ocellatus gold. But we'll see. I think in the coming days, we'll see some fry eggs in that shell. Now this tank does have algae on it. 
like some of my tanks do have. Uh, there are bristlenose catfish in this aquarium as well though. I have a breeding pair in here. And you can see they have been eating some of the algae on the glass, but they only come out at night because the Lamprologos is a lot of gold, they're pretty aggressive. And uh, the breeding pair that are in here, oh, the breeding pair of bristlenose I mean, uh, they are very large and uh, quite armoured so they are able to protect themselves. And um, I I've regularly see bristlenose fry in this aquarium. I catch them out because they get eaten by the Lamprologos is a lot of gold and I put them in another aquarium for grow out. Wish they could keep the algae at bay a little bit more than they have, but uh, these guys are fairly aggressive. And basically the bristlenose catfish stay in their caves during the day, come out at night. They're nocturnal anyway. I'm very happy that the male has accepted that female in the back corner, because now it looks like I have a breeding trio once again. So guys, if you want to try this, just a bit of persistence it pays off. We'll end up with a breeding trio as, as well. I'd love to try and get a third female in here, see how that goes, but I don't know, tank might be a bit too small for four of these guys in here. Again, these are one of the most aggressive shell dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. And this is a two foot wide by two foot long, a 14 inch deep aquarium. So it's a pretty shallow aquarium, but it does have a big wide footprint for these guys. This, they obviously love to hug the substrate and uh, live in their little shells. But anyway, we'll see in the next few days if we see some fry coming out of these shells at the back of the tank. Hopefully we do. And then that will mean the fry from both females will survive uh, because the parental instinct, maternal instinct from the females will kick in. Both females won't eat the fry because the fry will mix together. And uh, we'll be hopefully pumping out these guys soon.